So today, what we're going to be making is a we're making a way to save changes made to foliage actors uh, in in runtime. So if I play now, see everything's here. I can remove them, make myself a path, and uh, there we go. I click escape. I click play again. Our path is here, still. So hope you enjoy. Let's just get right into it. It's a quick little video. So the very first thing that we are going to do is head over into our first person first person character. This is just a first person template by the way. Uh I've just added a a uh, landscape to it because we are going to be painting foliage. So head over to your first person character. Once you're in your first person character, we are going to set up a line trace. And I'm going to use keyboard E for that. I do a line trace by channel from our first person camera out from that you're going to get the world location which is going to be our starting point like so we need to get the rotation and then from the rotation we need to get the forward vector forward vector we're going to multiply with the amount that we want to go uh, forward like the distance so we want to multiply it by float I'm going to use 350 for this tutorial and then you simply want to add those two together the world location and the multiplication that's our endpoint we're going to draw the debug type for persistent ignore self all of that uh, what is very important here you can change your trace channel Right, you the trace channel that you choose is the one that we're going to be using to interact with. So you have to we're, we're going to work with that over on uh, when we set up our foliage as well. Uh, matter of fact, we can do that right now. Head over to foliage mode, Shift three, plus foliage, static mass foliage. I'm gonna just call it uh, something. Yeah, I'm just gonna name it default. Fuck it. Click it. Select a mesh for it. I'm gonna use a cube. You can use a bush, you can use anything you want. When you scroll down, you're going to find collision presets. Right now it's currently set to no collision. I'm going to use block all, but you can use custom. If you're using custom, make sure that the trace response that you set in your line trace is the blocked. So we're going to use visibility, so I'm going to block visibility. I'm just going to block all. That's all we need to do here. We can place a couple of uh, these. Like so. Line trace, is he working? Did I fuck up the line trace? Uh, no, the line trace is fine. So, what we need to do now is interact with these. So, we're going to try to just destroy them. We're going to break our out head in our first person blueprint. We're going to expand it. And we need our head component. The head component, we're going to cast to foliage instance static mesh component. And now we need to figure out who we're actually targeting, right? Because when we're doing this, we're just targeting all of these. Oh, actually, I think we're targeting just the component, but we need to figure out who the component is. If you go in here, you can see that they are all bundled up together. We need to separate one of them and get the information from one of them. How do we do that? We're going to first promote this one to a variable. And then we're going to get the head item and promote that to a variable. The head item. We can actually rename to index and the uh, foliage mesh component we could use and rename that to foliage ref. After that, we can just remove the instance. So we can drag in the foliage ref, remove instance, and the index is, of course, our index that we just promoted. Let's compile, save, and test that. Beautiful. Now we are able to remove it. Now we're going to work on our saving. Because every time that we start up now, it's going to respawn those items. So that is what we're going to do. What we're going to set up is a new uh, a struct. So let's head over to our content drawer. I'm going to put it here. You can put it anywhere you want. Make a new struct. I'm going to call it removed indexes. 
in here we need two variables, first one being foliage type foliage instanced static mesh component object reference. Second one being the index of type integer. Save that and close. Then we need to set up a new game instance where we're going to be handling most of this. So head over to your blueprints, go into blueprint class, all classes, search up game instance. Select that, call it something. I'm going to call it my game instance. After that, you're going to want to go into edit, uh, open it up and then go into edit, project settings, maps and modes. On the bottom here, you're going to see game instance, select it, click yours, and then uh, close it up. Head into your game instance. And in here, let's just create a new variable right away. I'm going to call it removed indexes of type removed indexes, the struct that we just made. Change it to a sing from a single variable to an array. Compile save. Then you want to right click anywhere you want in the graph. Search for event tick. No, uh, event. Uh, oh my god. Event uh, init. For the initializing. Now we're just going to do another basic thing, which is checking if the save game exists, right? Because we need to do that. Does save game exist? Go to the branch out of that. Slot name. We're going to be calling it for calling it removed foliage. If it doesn't exist, we need to make it. So create save game object. Save game object. We haven't made that yet. So let's open our content drawer. Right click anywhere you want. Search for blueprints. Blueprint class. All classes. Search for save game. Click it. Select. And then call it something. I'm going to call it removed foliage. Save. Once you got that, open it up. We can add the variable again. The variable being removed indexes of type removed indexes and an array, same as last time. Close out of your save game. Select the class removed foliage save game, and then you want to save that game to slot. Slot name being the one we just made, and that's it for that. However, if it does exist, we want to load it. So load game from slot. Again, slot being the one that we know. Then we want to cast to our save game object. So cast to removed fully save game or whatever you called it. Add from that, we want to get removed indexes. And we want to set our game instances removed indexes to the incoming one from our load. This is all fine and dandy. Uh, let's, uh, we, but we actually don't have any, you know, any. Uh, we haven't gotten any intel here, right? The the array is empty. So let's go over to our first person character. Right after we remove the instance, you want to cast your game instance. In my case, my game instance. Object being get game instance. Out from that, we want to get the array, removed indexes, and we want to add to it. What do we want to add to it? Well, we're going to split the structure pin and then we're going to add our foliage ref. And we're going to add our index. Right? After that, we need to actually save this, right? So, let's back into our game instance, create a new, right click anywhere you want, create a new custom event. Call it save indexes. After that, load game from slot. Slot name being the one that we made before. And then you want to cast your removed foliage save game. Out from that, you want to set removed indexes to the incoming one from our game instance. And then you want to save game to slot. Object being the cast2, slot name being the one that we know. Compile, save. Now we need to call this, right? So let's actually just uh, collapse this down to a function. Save 
foliage indexes. That's not how you type that. Indexes. Right? Say foliage indexes. Head back into your first person character. After you add it, call save indexes from our game instance. Save foliage indexes. Why do I have two of those? Save foliage indexes. Hang on. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, because I've called them. So I'm going to actually... That's that's dumb, isn't it? We're going to just call... So actually, now that I see it, we could actually just... We do, don't need this custom event. We could just... Call this function. Ah, uh, let's just call the custom event. Fuck it. Save indexes. Like so. Once that is done, we can collapse this down to our function. And we're going to call this one interact and save foliage. Interact and save foliage. Right? When we click E, this is going to fire off. We need to return that. See that we haven't fucked up anything. Okay, that's awesome. Now, so we are interacting with it. We are removing it. We're casting it. We're adding it, and then we're saving it. However, we are not loading anything yet. So that is what we're going to do next. Right-click anywhere you want. Create a new custom event, and this one is going to be called Cull Foliage. And the cull foliage is very simple. We're going to grab our removed indexes. We're going to do a for each loop. We're going to check all of the indexes that we have. Break the array element. You want to go out from the foliage and you want to type remove instance. Instance being the index. Let me see what remove instances is actually. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> okay, so we could probably could probably have done this differently, right? Yeah, I, sh I didn't need to store your indexes in an array and then just, you know, this is going to loop through it for you by the looks of it. So what you would do then is you would uh, open up your removed index structure. You would change this into a array, and then uh, ins and then not have it as an array here, right? So you would just you would just uh, access this one that's not an array, and then you would break it, and then you would get the array, right? But we're not going to do that now. Um, I'm probably going to remake that in a, in a future video though, if if we're going to expand on the system. I'm probably going to do it like that. Anyway, we need to be able to call this, uh, call this, right? So after we have loaded everything, you want to call foliage. Very simple. Now, since we started it before, I think we still, I think we have a save game. So right click anywhere you want in the content browser on top of a folder. Show in Explorer. Go into the saved, save games, and then just delete that because we tested it before, right? So our save game is still there. Let's go in here. Play. Goddamn helicopter near me. So let's make ourselves a path here. There we go. Escape. Click play again. And we didn't load, did we? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Hang on. Did we load or did we not load? Yeah, we're not loading. I uh, fucked up. I, uh, I I put in the array index where we want the array element. Now, let's click play. And our path is there. We can make a new path out here. Escape. Play again. And we got a new path. Let's clean up everything. Oh, we got a little bit of lag there. Clean up everything. Escape. Play again. And there we go. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I learned something definitely because I am going to change this out for remove instances so I don't uh, 
Well, it doesn't really matter where you loop it, right? Let's be fair. But I do think this might be a little bit easier on the system. I don't know, though. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of testing of that. If you want to see how we can actually change these out to interactables, uh, so basically when you are interacting with them, they turn into a blueprint actor, let me know and, uh, and I'll make a follow-up on that so we can integrate that into the system. And uh, yeah, that was it for now. Thank you. Subscribe, like if you found this helpful, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.